Fio Q15, a premium deck amp from Fio. I have it with me now in my hand. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> Been spending quite a bit of time on it. And this is a premium deck amp as noted earlier. So let's just have a look at the price and the packaging for this Q15. If you are in Malaysia, you can get this Q15 from Rep8 Audio Malaysia. Okay. Price at 1899 or if you are based internationally, you can get it at around 397 So as I mentioned again, this is a premium DAC amp. So why is it premium? Let's just have a look at the configuration itself. As you can see here, taken from FIO website, this Q15 offers quite a lot, okay, under this whole assembly here, starting with the build itself. This thing is super solid. So compare with my mobile phone here, it's pretty much, you know, within the same dimension, okay designed to be similar but it is also a lot thicker than my mobile phone and what you're going to find inside is a combination of premium flagship level AKM DAC M which is AK4191 and AK4499EX yes this is correct you are hearing it right AK4499EX that's pretty much the highest range AKM DAC offered and I am a big fan of AK4499 or should I say AK49X series. So let's just quickly have a look at some of the details which I think worth to mention at this point of time. So one of the key reasons to have this Q15 is power. Power on the go. If you look at the specification there, I don't have to explain to you. The number speaks for itself, all right? We are looking at an in excess at the most powerful setting from this 4.4 mm balance. You're going to get at around 1006 milliwatt of power per channel each side okay not combined at 32 ohm and even the single ended as you can see there all right 85 milliwatt at 300 ohm so meaning that if you were to attach the sennheiser hd 600 which is rated at 300 ohm right even through this 3.5 mm single ended you're going to get 85 milliwatt of power per channel on the other hand, despite all the impressive spec that you have seen just now, this Q15 is still a portable device. So how does it work as a portable device? Have a look here. You see here my earphone, Sivga Nightingale already attached through my shirt here. And this is how I actually have worn it. Place it here, attach. Bluetooth mode already connected to my phone here. Okay. And I slip it in into my pants here. You see that? <laughs> Just nice. And totally wireless. Play music from my Tidal here. As you can see here on screen right now, okay, this is a very solid device as noted earlier. Aluminum casing and everything, premium build. And this is a glass here with LED display. And at the front here, you're going to find this volume adjustment which is a digital rotary volume adjustment step okay and you can configure the volume anywhere from uh, 60 to 120 and of course you have this audio jack here and at the back here perhaps one of the attraction for this q15 let me just put some light onto it okay can you see that okay so you would notice that it has two usb type c which is the normal one usb in and power in Mark as red. Basically, it means that this thing support PD 3.0 power charging for the battery. And of course, you're going to have this uh, port here for digital in, which is, I think, coaxial in. And you're going to have this toggle button, which is phone mode or desktop mode on and off. Another feature why you want to have this Q15. Okay, now let's just get it connected as it is. First, I'm just going to show you how is it connected with to my PC here using USB 3.0. Okay, uh, hold on, sorry, this one, USB 3.0, okay, and immediately, if you turn off the desktop mode, okay, which is uh, here, you're going to see that this unit is charging now, as indicated here, okay, and this is normal charging, okay, it is already running from the battery, also at the same time, it allows charging, but if you want to maximize on the usage of this Q15, as a stationary device, especially if you want a bit more of preservation to the battery, it is best to use a separate charger. Okay, and in this case, I have 
this charger connected to a Xiaomi 33 watt power of charger and attach it to this and now you would notice that the charging indicator turns blue means that it is now charging in PD 3.0 quick charging mode so in this uh, mode if you use this uh, quick charging uh, mode it will charge at, uh, at under not even uh, up to two hours I think and it will be slightly slower if you just rely on this one to my understanding is that if you intend to operate this Q15 purely as a stationary device on your desktop on your machine here okay and do not have any intention to move it around as a portable device then always switch on to desktop mode and you will notice that the unit will not be charged in this mode so what it means is that you get to preserve the battery here inside it will never charge the battery it will purely run on this power as you provide here as you can see here you can toggle the setting all right the mode of which you want to operate it so most of the time i just use usb if attached to my pc and bluetooth if i connect it to my phone as i have shown you earlier i actually use this portably and when i use this as a portable device i just use the bluetooth ldac using bluetooth so in this case i use usb okay connected to my pc and some of the feature which i would like to show you okay here is that when you press long here like that and then you're going to see the gain and this is very important this is one of the few DAC amp, portable DAC amp that offers ultra high gain. <laughs> that is where you get the most power from this Q15. I'm not going to go through all of them because it will just simply take too much time. But basically, you can configure so many things with this uh, Q15. It's just such an advanced device that it would even allow you to rotate the screen and do filters. And of course, if you are the type who like equalizer or eq this q15 offers parametric eq or peq while connected to my phone here which is a sony xperia mark one you can install fio control app and while in bluetooth mode you can also have control of this fio q15 most of the time 90 percent of the time i am using it as a bluetooth device when not sitting on my desk so if I sit on my desk, obviously I'm just going to use the USB mode. But if I'm moving around, I'm just going to use the Bluetooth mode. Because this Bluetooth mode for Q15 is super impressive. It does not sound like it is running from a Bluetooth. And I would even draw a comparison. The performance of this Q15 is on par to Fio on K9, a desktop deck M which I have reviewed recently. And if I were to compare it against another Fio product, which I use quite a lot as well, btr15 i must admit that between these two pretty much they are comparable except that this q15 seems to offer better stability when handling higher resolution bluetooth codec like ldac so i get less jittery kind of situation when i use this q15 the only caveat that i would say that when attached to my phone paired together like this as a bluetooth pair for music this at least this btr15 have an internal microphone which will allow me to pick up phones and do you know any kind of voice call or anything like that but this q15 does not support bluetooth calls so just remember that another key selling factor for this q15 is the two usb that you see at the back here okay so it has desktop mode and non-desktop mode so what are the differences i have been testing it quite extensively as well listening through my pc and my phone setup and my conclusion will be like this okay when you set to desktop mode it does not charge okay that's one thing but i think most importantly you'll be wondering does it have any kind of effect on the sound itself and this is my answer if you attach it to a natively pd 3.0 power delivery like from my pc here okay which is always running on pd 3.0 900 milliwatt over 900 milliwatt of power from the USB 3.0 then I would say that there's practically no differences in the sound quality that at least to the limit of my hearing okay because it is already being supplied with very stable flow of electricity or current from the USB 3.0 from my PC or even from certain phone which runs genuine legitimate pd 3.0 like this sony xperia 1 mark 4 or even samsung galaxy s series i do know that there's a lot of phone in the market right now being marketed as 
you know, USB 3.0, but not necessarily running on PD, power delivery 3.0 and above. So just remember this. The differences is that if you attach to a phone, which is using the older USB running at 2.0 or below, and PD 2.0 and below, and the PD is not powerful enough, then it is a good idea to attach a support, you know, power through this red USB port here, which allow for quick charging and also it will supply a lot more powerful and better stability with the flow of the current itself. Did I mention that I am a big fan of AKM AK4490 series? Yes, I think I did a few times. <laughs> All right. And for example, I absolutely love the sound that I'm getting from this Centron Deckpot HD here, one of my number one dongle a few years back before FC6 come into the picture. All right. This runs on the first generation 4490 SEQ, which is pretty much similar to this, except that this is the later generation. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that the sort of sound tuning that I am hearing from this Q15 is pretty much the sort of sound which I love. Okay. Which click to my taste. Right. So what are the sort of sound which I love? First, it has excellent resolution, imaging, details, macro and micro detail. And I think most importantly for me is the sound timber itself, the tonality and the presentation of the sound itself. It offers a lot of richness, texture and definition to the sound itself. And when it comes to the sound, let me just clarify this. If you can see here, right, the notes which I have taken down for this Q15, first of all, it is definitely something which I would consider as balanced and neutral. Or should I say close to neutral? And why I say close to neutral? So let's just have a look at some of the three dynamic range frequency here. Okay, as noted there, when I observe the mid-range itself, I can feel that there's a slight coloration there. All right, despite being neutral, it is mildly boosted. So what I'm trying to say is that if you are familiar with AKM devices or even R2R devices, there's a bit of frontal sort of presentation with the mid-range especially when it comes to lower frequency vocals like you know contralto vocals or even some baritone vocal male vocals there's an emphasis of the sound note itself it feels a bit more frontal especially when i listen to diana crawl or even listen to morrissey or even nick cave okay so it's not exactly neutral but it is a pleasant kind of coloration which it is easy for me to love and when we talk about you know lower frequency I noted that enhanced neutral. What is enhanced neutral? See, enhanced neutral means that when I listen to this Q15, especially when I use this Fostec T40 MK3, all right, Mark 3, which is my most difficult to drive headphone and also the bassiest one, I can feel that the bass texture itself is really rich, okay, dense, and a lot denser than what. I am hearing from this Burson Audio Playmate 2, which I have here, which is my reference. I have been using this Burson Audio Playmate 2, and yes, I am comparing it with this Burson Audio Playmate 2, despite this is a dedicated desktop deck amp. Okay, so the bass itself is enhanced, but the good thing about it, it is not to a point that it becomes so bassy or so colored that I would say that it is, you know, derailed from the neutral part, okay? And when it comes to upper frequency, now, this is another part which I really love about this Q15. It has ample amount of energy sparkle to a point that, you know, despite being relatively considered as musical, or even some people might even call this Q15 warmer sounding as compared to certain hi-fi standard nowadays, this Q15, especially when paired with something like this, uh, Final Audio A5000 or even this Hedis MP145, these two IM are nati natively kind of a bit on the brighter side, right? I am still hearing an excellent reproduction of the upper frequency with lots of micro detail and air, okay? So the keyword here is that micro detail and air. It is there, it is present, but it is never offensive. There's no element of pina glare that I am det detecting from the upper mid-range all the way to the treble itself. It is just simply flowing and smooth. So the keyword here is smooth.
Dagpot HD which runs on another AK4490 and this Hebe FC6, right? And also this Sony PCM-D100. All three of them exhibit similar kind of sound signature which is analog, organic, rich, dense, analytical and musical at the same time. So the same can be said for this Q15. And on the technical aspect of it, the best part is that when I listen to this Q15, I would just simply put it this way. I did mention that, you know, when I talk about these two dongles, very rarely that I would describe these two as being wide and open sounding. They might be open, but they are not spacious enough if I were to compare it to this Q15. So my, the way I put it, all right, the way I look at it, all right, if I were to compare the three of them, then I would just simply say that this Q15 realize the need which I wish for these two of having a wider sense of soundstage. Usually at this level, when we talk about you know high performing devices, the ones that separate them are usually not the technical aspect of it, but the way they present the sound. And I would just simply say that Q15, as noted there, hovering very, very close to analog natural sound, which some people might even say as being warm sounding. Okay, that's the definition of organic and natural sound that M. Okay, and if you were to see the comparison with the rest of the competition, it is indeed again pretty much identical to Centron Deadpot HD when it comes to sound and timber, and also iFi Zendek V2 and Zen Ken, which I had used to own two years back. So they are pretty much similar when it comes to this sound timber presentation. So, but the only thing which I think still the most analog sounding is this Hebe FC6 here, okay? Because this R2R have a special kind of sound to it, you know, especially for analog sound lovers, okay? And let's just have a look with the rest of the competition there. I also placed there BTR15. So, you might be wondering what are the major differences between these two, aside from the power, of course. When it comes to the sound timber itself, this is pretty much close to being analog, natural, all right? but not so much as this Q15. But the key thing is that, you know, aside from performance, one of the key elements that I would even say that, you know, the appeal of this BTR15, aside from being smaller, is that it also offer slightly, I might, I just gonna admit, it has slightly better open wider sounding soundstage when attached to certain type of IEM, especially with my Sivga Nightingale here, or even Hedis MP145, because this is less frontal, and it also seems to offer a bit more of air when driving magnetic planar, okay? But when it comes to outright power and resolution and imaging, of course, Q15 has it, all right? So let's just compare it with Fio K9, okay? This is another desktop deck M from Fio, and I am very familiar with K9. So if you were to look at the graph there, K9 is pretty much not as analog and not also as hi-fi it is somewhere in the middle there and you can even say that k9 offer a bit more of balance and less coloration okay i have to admit when compared with this q15 and when we compare with another very popular one which is cod mojo 2 okay so i have been listening to cod mojo 2 and i can just simply put it this way the focus for this between these two you know, devices, both very excellent devices. They are highly analytical and resolving. But the main differences is that if you listen to both of them, it is quite evident that this Q15 still sounded more natural and more, or just put it this way, right? Less bright than Mojo 2. Now let's have a look at how does this Q15 compare against the most powerful portable DAC M in the market still nowadays, <laughs> which is iFi Diablo. I have tested it this iFi Diablo, if you seen my video some time ago, okay, that thing, this Diablo was super, super powerful. It is definitely huge on raw power to a point that even when I use echo mode on that iFi Diablo, I find it a bit too shouty, especially when running IEM, even Tanjim Zero. The only DAC M that was able to make Tanjim Zero sounded shouty. That's how powerful it is to a point that if you love or if you just simply need outright loudness, iFi Diablo is still the one to go for. And this is a lot more refined when it comes to the way it projects 
the loudness itself, the headroom, okay? All in all, after using this Q15 for quite a while, using a different type of scenario, whether wired or wireless, desktop or portable, I just gonna simply declare I absolutely love the sort of sound and performance coming from this Q15, okay? To a point that I would even dare say, if I were to get rid of this Burson Audio Playmate 2 here, which I will not do, okay? <laughs> this is still my reference still. I can be completely happy to substitute it with this Q15, all right? Over anything else, because it has the kind of feature, it has the kind of sound, it has the kind of performance which I need, which I enjoy, okay? Especially when listening to music or even for monitoring purposes, despite being slightly warmer or even a bit colored, when it comes to the sound presentation itself. So for the price asked of this Q15, I would just say it is totally worth it.